This is 911. Do you have an emergency? Today on Rescue 911, high above the earth. A thrill-seeking jump gone bad. Her body hit the bottom of the plane, making a tremendous noise. Forces a pilot to make a life-threatening decision. On water, we had a chance. Our troubled world is fractured by cultures and divided by borders. But when tragedy strikes, courage and love know no boundaries. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, in a special international episode of Rescue 911, true stories of heroes who remind us that despite our differences, people the world over share a passionate commitment to preserving life. We begin in Normandy, France, late on the afternoon of August 3rd, 1976, as members of a local skydiving club gathered at the Cannes Carpiquet Airport. That day, three parachutists, including Nicole Guédon, were planning to do a tandem jump known as a star, which they had performed many times before. Lucien Levallois was director of the local skydiving center. I knew Nicole very well because I had seen her on her arrival at the school. She had never seen a parachute in her life, so I had the pleasure to teach her everything you had to do on the first jump. At this time, she had to have done close to a thousand jumps. Claude Treschamp was the pilot that day. At the time, there was a great deal of spirit in the club. Everybody would know one another, and it was an atmosphere where everybody would trust one another. We were flying the last flight of the day. Nicole was making her third jump of this type that day. There was nothing special about it. This jump, on the contrary, was a relaxed jump with friends. Claude dropped two solo jumpers first, before climbing to 6,500 feet to drop Nicole's group. When exiting the plane, they wanted to save time, so they punched together as closely as possible. And Miss Guédon was sitting in the doorway from where she would uh, jump first, and the two others held onto her shoulders from behind. Continued. The more the minutes passed, the more uncomfortable Nicole's situation became. We didn't know whether she was conscious or not, and in need of care that we couldn't give her. Three parachutists making a tandem jump near a small airport in Normandy, France, had leapt from the plane at 6,500 feet as Lucien Levallois, director of the skydiving center, looked on. I had a pair of binoculars which enabled me to follow the jumps. My first surprise was to see only two parachutists leaving the plane. It wasn't too hard to know who was there. The color of her jumpsuit allowed me immediately to identify Nicole. She was held prisoner by a hook that's next to the door, which was normally used to pull parachutes open automatically for the beginning students.
I couldn't pull on her very, very, very strongly in this manner, because even though a plane can fly very well by itself, as soon as she was swinging from side to side, the plane would swerve, and I was obliged to get hold of the control stick. I thought that uh, by swinging the plane, I could have enabled her to uh, jump off from her spot. When the skydiver landed, his first worry was to quickly come and warn us, to tell us, watch out, I may have hurt Nicole while passing her, and she may not be able to open her parachute. Her body hit the bottom of the plane, making a tremendous noise. And so I had to ask myself if I was running the risk of hurting her. I saw her gestures and then her eyes, which were saying, no, I can't do it anymore, let me fall. Down below, Lucien was trying to figure out if the pilot could simply cut the strap and let Nicole parachute to the ground. It was difficult for us to know what would happen next, because we didn't know what part of the harness he had to cut. It could cause Nicole to slip through it. And above all, we didn't have enough information about the ability Nicole still had at that time to open the parachute. The control tower told me to land on the glass runway. I yelled negative because her head, as far as I could tell, was lower than the wheel. So if I had bounced a little bit, uh, the poor woman would have crushed her skull. I was thinking about the water, since there's the canal that runs by Caen and then goes to the sea. On water, we had a chance. A drop-off in the canal appeared to be very dangerous, given the narrowness of the canal. And since the sea was seven and a half miles away from the skydiving center, by plane it could be very quickly reached. Me? I said, fine, it's the same thing, since water is the same everywhere. But in addition, at sea, there were rescuers, as well as frogmen who would be able to recover her. The Louis Trion police were notified to send rescue boats to a designated drop-off point. Nicole had now been hanging upside down in near-freezing temperatures for more than 30 minutes. I had to really ask myself whether she was in good shape or not. In the beginning, she was touching the inside when it was her complete hand. After that, it was only her fingertips. But then after that, nothing was touching. Claude spotted a helicopter and radioed for assistance. The Department of Public Safety arranged to provide the chopper and two scuba divers to help with Nicole's rescue. I wanted to try to cut the strap to see if it would cut easily. I was really afraid. I was over the land and rather high up. I had never thought that a strap like that could have been cut so easily. The more the minutes passed, the more uncomfortable Nicole's situation became. We didn't know whether she was conscious or not, and in need of care that we couldn't give her. By eight in the evening, everyone had arrived at the drop-off point. I was not high, that's all I can say. The divers told me 18, 24 feet.
on savait que... We knew that the pilot was safe. Already that was a good thing. But we didn't know at all how Nicole was, and we had to wait for minutes which were very, very long. The divers told us a story that they came with their big knife and everything to try to cut the parachute. She started to yell, saying, no, no, don't cut it, it's not worth it, because uh, the parachute is very expensive. All of a sudden, they told us everything had gone well. Obviously, it was a great relief for us. Of course. Everybody did what they had to do. And then there was also a little bit of luck, probably. For me. It was champagne for everyone, in the good French tradition. Miraculously, Nicole Gaydon suffered only minor bruises in the incident. It was tiring for me, but the more time went by, the more I was thinking that something was going to happen. What we couldn't do up in the air, both of us, other people were taking care of it, and I trusted them. It's entirely possible that someone less poised than Nicole under the plane would have pulled on the handle that opens one of the two parachutes, which obviously would have been catastrophic. Within two weeks, Nicole was skydiving again. 17 years later, she has completed more than 3,000 jumps and is an instructor at the skydiving center. They certainly listen to her, because, understandably, this incident is still talked about today. It was a difficult time, but since everything turned out okay, it's actually a good memory to have saved someone. It's not bad, you know. <laughs>